you don't always get the army you want, you just go in with the army that you have. Some of us don't always get the parents that we want, we get the parents that gave us love. Yeah. My dad, I wish you could trade him in. I, I'm not his biggest fan. Um, so I always kind of made up imaginary parents. I had a, a few different moms. Aretha Franklin was one. Young <laughs> Laura was one. Gladys Knight was one. And an African singer named Miriam McKeeba was one. Uh, only one of them I have met. I met Dion Laura years ago, and I told her that she was one of the voices that raised me, that she was one of my surrogate moms. And she gave me the weirdest look. I said, so you kind of raised me, so you're, you're kind of like my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it! So, that was nuts. And so Charlie Harper, he's one of those guys. I, I've been playing UK subs records since 1846. And so I walk into the venue, and there's just men pushing road cases all around. There's a big fair dance floor, and the UK subs are on stage uh, doing a song called Warhead, which I've been singing in the shower since I was five. And so I figured he needs an audience. So I'm standing right in the middle of the, of the dance floor. Warhead! I'm just a fan. And so, everyone sound checks. We sound check again without Paul because he's too sick for a sound check. Hopefully, he's going to make the gig. So, we're very nervous at this point. We sound check with Lee, number two. And so, the doors open. The place is immediately packed with people. The bands start to play. The UK subs play, and they're up there ripping it up. The greatest hit set. Everyone's happy. The dance floor is alive with activity. The audience is like three-fourths, maybe four-fifths or so, people from back in the day. That is to say, men in their late 40s, early 50s, attempting to recapture their youth. <laughs> The rest of the audience are people from the ages of 18 to 20-something who are in shape and go see shows all the time. And so you have people who used to go like this, and people go, yes, all getting together to have a real fun time. I watched from the mezzanine level. It was hilarious. Because there's these kids and they're like these Mohawk youth and they're just kicking out like, ah, and he's like these big, fat, old, balding men. Like, <laughs> oh, you see a man like kind of squatting in the middle. Like, everyone comes to a stop. Like, what does he need? Like, I can't, I can't find my BlackBerry. And everyone has to stop. <laughs> Some guy at the mall is like, thank you. Oh, stores. Okay, carry on. It was silly. You know, men sweating profusely, like grossly out of like, oh God, oh God. And so the damned arrive, the damned are lurking in the hallway. I walk past Captain Sensible, who on this night is attired in tights, a shirt, and his red beret. He looks hilarious. And so I walk by, and I, I just wanted to be able to say, like, hey, Captain, it's Henry, good to see you again. Like your band? Keep moving. I can't. I can't say a word. I'm just going to walk by him and know that I walked by him. And I'll just have to say, that was great. So I walk by him. I'm walking by Captain Sensible. I have all your records. I like you a lot. Keep moving. And I hear, hey, Henry. <sighs> no, no, I must speak to him. What can I say? So I stood there. I was trying to get out. I was like, hello, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and so finally, after the game, and they were amazing, it's, it's our turn to play. I'm nervous, everyone's nervous. Paul has shown up, he insists he's going to be fine. We go out on stage, the place goes completely nuts because we're the band you came to see. And I introduce the band, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Paul Fox on guitar, the place goes crazy. Mr. Dave Ruffy on drums, Mr. Seggs on bass, you know, these are the ruts. Woo! And our first song is called Something That I Said. And just like we choreographed it on the D of said, if you count that as like uh, an upbeat, he came in on the downbeat of the song. So I said, something that I said. I was like, oh, that's some arena rock shit. <laughs> And we go crashing into this song. And since you know, many of you are in bands and have spent time on stage, you know what I'm talking about. And for those who don't, believe me. 
if you've been on stage enough, you know when your gig is going to be good or bad in the first song, and you're rarely wrong. Sometimes you know when the first song is a little weird, you're like, it's, we're playing well, but there's going to be difficulties tonight for whatever reason it is, and there's, a many, there's many reasons. Sometimes you get through halfway through the first song, the first 40 seconds of a minute, and you're like, oh man, we got this. And you already know you're going to deliver, and you can do the gig on your head, and it's going to be great, because you're just in it. I don't know what it is, but I'm never wrong. And we got partway through this song, I'm like, man, we, we're going we're gonna to kick these people's asses with this music. And we did. We got through the set. There was no major train wrecks. We didn't have to stop in the middle and start again. I may have uh, needed a semicolon or used a comma and one line or two. Uh, there may have been a missed uh, a stick or an odd string, but nothing anyone would go, what the fuck's up with that? So we got through the set, and we get to the last song, people are going, you know, crazy. And I said, the last song of the night, and I was like, boo! I said, well, what? Come on! I said, it's called In a Rut, the band's first A-side. And then you know the outro of the song, I need all of you to sing along with me, okay? I'm like, yeah! So we're playing the song, and you know, before we do, I said, and I need all my punk rock stars backstage to come out and help me, right? And if they don't come out, I'm going to look pretty stupid. And so we get to the end of the song, and all the bands from backstage, they're all over the stage, grabbing mics, singing along. It was really great. And this body slams into me, grabs the mic. Now I'm singing with somebody. I'm singing with Charlie Harper. I'm singing with my dad. <laughs> I want to be shot. Just kill me now, get a photo, and then kill me. Because this is it. This is as good as it gets for me. Drop the weight. No, 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 no. Well, over, over. Now drop it! And I am one of those people who refuses to live in the moment. I live next to the moment. Like, that's the moment. There it is. There's the parade. Get in the parade. No. I'd rather stand next to the parade. 